SAP Developer News is back with another information-packed edition curated just for you by our SAP Developer Advocates. This week sees the launch of a pilot programme for a brand new initiative from SAP, the Open Documentation Initiative. Our documentation on the SAP Help Portal is valuable to us all, and we want to open it up and collaborate on it with you by offering you the chance to provide feedback and also contribute content. We've put together contribution guidelines to help you understand and also start getting involved. The pilot program itself will start with documentation for the SAP Business Application Studio and also with the documentation for the contribution guidelines themselves. Find out more in this blog post and watch out for an upcoming hands-on SAP Dev live stream session next week. This week also marks the release of version 1.90 of SAP UI5 and Open UI5. As always, both releases have most things in common. For example, the time picker control of both frameworks has been redesigned and now includes a clock dial interface. And there's also an entirely new control to both frameworks. It's a new type of list control dedicated for notification lists. That's clearly a type of list that's indispensable to many applications. But there are also differences among the releases. The SAP UI 5 release, for example, comes with a local research features for key user adaptions. And the Open UI 5 documentation also has a fairly new look. The API documentation of a given control now links directly to the source code on GitHub. So you are always just one click away from the source code. For the full release notes, please visit SAP UI5 or Open UI5 respectively, .hana.ondemand.com. One of the great things about the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model is how we're able to deliver new features on a very regular basis, almost monthly. And the month of May is no exception. Uh, just released are the collection of release notes and new functional documentation for the Cloud Application Programming Model for the month of May. We've linked to those release notes in the description of this video, but I wanna highlight just a few of the major things for you. First of all, we see now the enforcement of a minimum Node.js version of version uh, 12 uh, with the upcoming changes to the long-term support release versions of Node.js. Uh, Cloud Application Programming Model is now enforcing this. We also see some important multi-tenancy changes and improvements. In the documentation section, we have a new guide for managing data privacy and a revised guide for authorization section. In the Node.js runtime, we keep see the introduction of a couple of new beta features. Uh, for instance, the new logging facade and a custom error handler. We also see improved input validations and CSRF token handling for service consumption. On the Java side, we see streaming support for streaming media, improved CSV file handling, and support for type references. Now this is just a little bit of the highlights. It doesn't encompass everything that's new in this release. So we'd encourage you to check out the full release notes linked in the description to this video. The Service Center is a new feature in the SAP Business Application Studio, which you can find in the left-hand toolbar in any dev space. This new user interface not only allows you to inspect services provided by existing destinations, it also enables you to add new destinations without having to use the SAP BTP cockpit. This is convenient and time-saving simultaneously as you won't have to remember all the additional properties you need for a specific destination type. SAP community member Saket Amrotka recently discovered this feature and published a blog post about his first impressions. So if you are curious as well and you don't know how to get started, I recommend reading that blog post. 